An engineer wants to build a bridge for cars and trains to cross a wide bay. Which type of bridge should the engineer build? Okay, now he now the um, now the book has told us that a bridge has to be constructed. But what kind of bridge? What type of bridge? There are two things you must know in this question: is what is a wide bay? Let's see what a bay is. A bay is a coastal body of water that connects to a larger body of water. For example, an ocean or sea. Now you must be thinking what this is. Let's show you a picture. So students, basically this is the coast, the, the, the very narrow uh, white line that you can see. And you can see the difference in the water color as well. Here it's darker and here it's lighter. Why? Because this is a coast. The bed is the river or the, the, the seabed is very shallow here. And there it's deep. So this is the coast, right? This is basically a bay. Why do we call it a bay? Because it's a water body, a coastal water body that is connected to the main water body, body which is a sea or ocean, right? So this is called a bay. So it says we have to build a bridge across a bay, which means like this way, horizontally, right? But a bay, you might be wondering, this is a very short distance. It says a wide bay. Let's see how wide a bay can be. Here is the Bay of Bengal. Uh, you know, the Bay of Bengal is uh, just um, touching the India and Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar and Bangladesh, right? So this is the Bay of Bengal and you can see it's so huge because the Bay of Bengal is the Bay of the Indian Ocean, right? So if you have to make, for example, from Madras to Kuala Lumpur, from Madras to Kuala Lumpur, if you had to make a bridge, How, because it's a wide bridge, he's uh, the author is asking about, right? So, what kind of bridge do we have to build? Now, answer is very simple. You have already studied this that suspension bridges are used to cover long distances. Yes, students, we use suspension bridges to cover long distances because they are strong, they're easily built, and they can be. Uh, they are durable as well. So if you want to make a bridge across a wide bay for transportation of cars and trains, we have to make a suspension bridge. Now I hope you have understood the concept of bay and how we can put it to use in deciding what type of bridge we want. The third question and the last question is, engineers want to get traffic from one side of a river to the other, but they are worried about weather and the weight of vehicles. Should they build a bridge or tunnel? Okay, now here's another scenario. It says that the engineers want to tra get traffic from one side of a river to the other, which means traffic can be of any kind, right? It can be heavyweight traffic, lightweight traffic, and but they say they're worried about the weather, the weather conditions and the weight of vehicles. And then it's, it's, uh, it asks you, should they build a bridge or tunnel? So first we have to see how weather can affect a bridge or tunnel. Weather can affect all the bridges we build, be it the wind in the forms of storms, cyclones or tornadoes, rain and ice. Yes, bridges do freeze, also affect it, plus the salt harms it too. Now you must be wondering why we are being told this because it's not in the lesson. Students, you must understand this to in, in order to be able to um, answer the question. Whether you can, you know, when we build a bridge, a cyclone can come, a tornado can come, a storm can come and it can affect the strength of the bridge. It can weaken its base. It can weaken the suspension cables or the or the or the horizontal uh, track that the um, that the trains or the, the vehicles travel across. It can it can crack its bridges because the wind has huge power in it. Apart from that, rain rain can also affect the bridges. Why? Because if we have acid rain due to po pollution, we can have a weathering. Right, and it can wear away the concrete in the bases, in the base, or in the um, the towers, or in the asphalt that is um, that uh, that makes the bridge. Apart from that, 
when it does snow when it does snow in colder countries the bridge freezes when the bridge freezes it needs to be you know uh, it needs to be melt then like the when the ice is laid upon it we need to we need to um, de-ice it or we need to melt that ice for that we use salt and that salt basically causes harm to the asphalt to the black material that is used to carpet the the, the roads and the bridges so in such way we can the weather can affect the bridges let's have some pictures look here this is the effect of wind on a bridge look how broken how shattered it is broken into pieces here is the icing explained you can see it's it might have been closed for the for use because of the heavy snow or the icing effect and we can have this as well look how uh, how abandoned this bridge is no one is traveling it because it has all been iced and now if we want to de-ice it they use salt so that the ice can melt quickly which harms the asphalt that is laid laid on this part of the bridge it can all uh, it you know it eats away the asphalt and it weakens it so weather does affect it so in order to avoid the weather effects we have to build a tunnel basically tunnel is prone is not prone to weather effects and can heavy and can it can carry heavy weights as well so that was the answer students you must copy these answers on your loose sheets as homework all right okay now we have another activity as circle the correct answer the easiest way to get from point a to point b is dash a circle under a river over a mountain or a straight line the answer is very clear and it's a straight line the second is beam bridges are often used for dash the options are long spans of distance short spans of distance crossing mountains or crossing lakes all right students beam bridges are the ones that we have the simplest ones and we always use it for short spans of distance all right you must be also copying this on your books the third mcq is the supports of an arch bridge are called dash beams arches abutments and suspensions you must know that it's not called beams it's not called suspensions because we don't have these two in an arch bridge then arches and abutments remain we have studied that the base or the support is called abutments the c option is correct then we have fourth mcq which is bridges are usually dashed to build the tunnels we have studied this in huge detail and i expect everyone to know this options are quicker but more difficult cheaper and easier more difficult and more expensive less easy but cheaper students you must know that it is always easy and cheaper to build bridge than to build a tunnel so we have done this you must copy this on your books as well moving on we have words and context and the question says look at the words that you circled in the text now use them to complete the sentences now i have mentioned them for your convenience these are the words that we circled in our text while e while reading the explanatory text overcoming earth's obstacle which are factors suspension stacks aqueducts commonly and load bearing let's see what the first one is that wall is dash if you tear it down the house will collapse okay so students what will it be yes you might have corrected it right guessed it right the that wall is load bearing if you tear it down the house will collapse students what this means is that 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 the same that the wall we are talking about is load bearing it's carrying the weight of the house so if we tear it down if we break it down if you if you uh, if it collapse the whole house will collapse which means that house that wall was carrying the weight of the whole house so if the main support 
finishes breaks down the whole house will come down crumbling the next is many dash lead to pollution such as the use of fossil fuels many factors lead to pollution many factors which means many reasons many things lead to pollution which are which is uh, some of them is use of fossil fuel for example using fossil fuels lead to pollution the third being there are dash of bricks at the construction site this is a very plain and very simple and this is stacks you know what stacks are the pile neat pile of things basically if you put brick on top of each other five to six bricks it becomes a stack we can have more than that in the one stack the fourth is a dash bridge uses cables and towers to support its load you must have known this by now a suspension bridge that's correct a suspension bridge uses cables and towers to support its load the fifth being the romans built dash in many parts of europe the romans built dash now you must have known by now it's aqueducts yes students aqueducts now i was expecting you guys to have searched for it but if you haven't searched for this let's see what an, what an aqueduct is so this is what an ancient roman aqueduct looks like now you must be wondering what is this thing basically it's a bridge you know and that's the reason it's mentioned in this uh, in this lesson in your lesson that bridges can be used as aqueducts how can like you look you can see it's a complete bridge and why is it called an aqueduct aqua means water duct means something a passage so it carries water from here to another part so the, this uh, aqueducts were built in Ro ancient roman in, in ancient roman times it has it had to carry water from water reservoir down the slope to their dwelling areas due to their living areas so if you have a water reservoir up here you would want to make a bridge or the aqueduct for so that water can come down here to the dwelling areas all right the sixth one is nocturnal animals are dash seen at night all right it is obvious what the answer is because only one is remaining which is commonly but what are nocturnal animals students nocturnal animals are those animals which are active at night and which look for their prey and their food at night and which are owls and bats you must know that these are two birds which are nocturnal animals they always look for their food and are active at night students i hope you have really enjoyed this lesson and this is the end of lesson number 9 i hope you are coping with it and don't remember don't forget to note your note these answers on your loose sheets and in your books and do homework regularly thank you everyone and